Though assisted suicide advanced in Italy, state-level assisted suicide legislation frequently lost this year. But our next guest says we need to remain vigilant about the rising threat of assisted suicide and take precautions to protect ourselves. Take a look at a recent conversation I had with a top expert on assisted suicide. Rita Marker is executive director of Patients' Rights Council. She is a practicing attorney in D.C. and in California and admitted to the Supreme Court Bar. Rita, thanks for being here. Thank you. Assisted suicide legislation has failed at the state level in about 27 states mm -hmm. this year. Is it really a threat? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that those who are promoting it recognize they might not get it through in a state in one try mm -hmm. or two or three or four, but they never give up. And one of the problems is that those on our side who see how dangerous this is for vulnerable people, once the threat is away in the state, they go back to other things, to watching baseball or whatever it may be. But those who are real advocates for doctor prescribed suicide do not give up. And it is so important for everyone to get involved now. So how can patients protect ourselves? And at what stage should we start thinking about this? Should I be thinking of how I need to be protecting myself? You should be absolutely thinking about how you're going to protect yourself mm. and other people. Okay. Because again, this makes all the difference in the world. You know, it's the sort of thing where some people think, well, it would just be accepted. No, it can become expected, and that's what it is. Now, I want to mention, too, that people think of it, they hear people say, ah, but I would like to take a pill and slip peacefully away. Mm. That sounds so good. But in fact, assume for a minute that you're in a supermarket, okay. that you're, you're at the pharmacy, behind the pharmacy, mm -hmm. waiting for antibiotics. Mm -hmm. You could be behind someone, and you're, I know you're not supposed to overhear things, but right. you often do. And a pharmacist could be handing someone something like this, and it's got 100 capsules in it. And the directions would be, take all of this with a light snack and alcohol to cause death. We're talking about 100 times the amount of barbiturates, that's what they are, that would be given before surgery or whatever. And you know, put all those, the stuff from all those capsules in applesauce or in a drink or whatever. So this is a reality. And this is being done in those states I just mentioned. That wouldn't be peaceful, but how do we know? Because these victims have passed away. For our Catholic viewers, should they involve priests in their legal documents to get priests to make sure they're defended and protected? If you ask a priest for legal information, um, that's very nice and it's very unwise. Why? Because a lot of times the priests don't understand the ins and outs of these. And in fact, for people who remember the Terry Schiavo case, or even those who don't once they find out about it, there was one priest that testified in that case. Mm -hmm. And he testified that it was fine to remove Terry's food and water. Priests do not spend a lot of time, do not understand these issues. And so while you may have a, you know, you want a priest to come for last rites, but you don't want a priest to decide what your legal documents should look like. Thank you so much for your insight on this. We do need to keep paying attention to this issue. Definitely. And I want to mention, too, that people really should go up to our website so that they can get information. Because at our website, which is mm -hmm. patientsrightscouncil.org, they will find all the information on all of these issues. They can call us and ask for a document, for example, a really good durable power of attorney for health care. Rita Marker, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.